the Jurassic period, the Cretaceous period, the Cambrian. At this point, you are probably aware that the entire history of our planet has been subdivided into numerous time periods like these. Scientists have spent the last few centuries putting together this geologic time scale, a system of chronological dating that relates the rocks on our planet to time. If you found a dinosaur fossil, odds are you wouldn't know how long ago it lived on Earth, at least not exactly. But with knowledge of the geologic time scale, you could be reasonably sure that it lived during the Jurassic period. Development of the geologic time scale has required extensive work in both relative and absolute dating of rocks. It has required stratigraphic correlation of lithologies, facies, and fossils located all across our planet. And it has required international cooperation among scientists of all backgrounds, working to develop a standardized system for recognizing, defining, and naming time intervals of the past. The formal geologic time scale used by scientists is known as the International Chronostratigraphic Chart. It includes not just the names of the time intervals, but also their absolute ages measured in millions of years and determined from absolute dating methods. The chart is produced by a collaborative academic organization known as the International Commission on Stratigraphy. The commission revises the chart almost every year and sometimes multiple times a year. The changes aren't merely to improve the aesthetics. The commission incorporates new information, new data, and new knowledge into the chart. They refine it as we improve our ability to tell time. As you can see, over the last decade, the colors of the time scale have been revised and new time intervals have been added through subdivision of old ones. The thicknesses and absolute ages of the intervals have also been refined. And you probably noticed that golden spikes were frequently added to the chart over the last decade. These golden spikes are actually a real thing. Think of them like railroad spikes. When workers set out to construct the first transcontinental railroad in the US, they worked in two directions. One group started in Omaha and the other started on the Pacific coast. They built toward each other, meeting at Promontory Point in Utah. When they finally met, a ceremonial gold spike was driven into the ground to join the rails. The last spike driven to complete the first transcontinental railroad, a symbolic gesture of the scale of the achievement. Well, geologists do something similar. In geology, golden spikes are driven into strata in order to mark the boundaries between time intervals. More specifically, the spike marks the location of the global stratigraphic section and point for a boundary. The section is the sequence of strata at the golden spike site. The point is the place where the spike is actually located. Although the golden spikes aren't always so golden, they occur around the world and serve two purposes. Like the spike used to join the two sides of the Transcontinental Railroad, the golden spikes in geology also serve 
as a symbol of the tremendous effort put forth by geologists to understand the structure and relationships of strata on our planet, and more importantly, to develop enough knowledge to recognize different boundaries between time intervals. But more importantly, the golden spikes are used to designate sections and points that are reserved for scientific analysis. GSSPs are protected from development and destruction so that scientists can use them as references. They can use them as references for drawing stratigraphic correlations between the GSSPs and other sites around the world. An important aspect of the International Chronostratigraphic Chart is that it deals with both rock and time. Recall that when strata can be correlated across wide areas, we call them stratigraphic units. A stratigraphic unit is a volume of rock which can be traced laterally across a region. Each stratigraphic unit receives a name. Some units can be traced laterally across a local region or area. Others can be correlated across the globe. There is a hierarchical system for naming, organizing, and assigning stratigraphic units. On a local or regional scale, the smallest stratigraphic unit is a single stratum or layer, which is called a bed. Beds don't usually receive names. They are too numerous. Various beds are grouped together into members. All beds in the member have the same lithology. Members of similar but not identical lithology are grouped together into formations. Formations are the most important units for most geologists. They, in turn, are grouped into larger groups and supergroups. When groups and supergroups can be correlated across the globe, they are organized into larger chronostratigraphic units, or bodies of rock representing intervals of time in the past. Groups and supergroups make up globally recognizable stages which are hierarchically organized into series, systems, erythems, and eonythems. Chronostratigraphic units correspond to geochronological units, or time intervals. Whereas the chronostratigraphic units are bodies of rock that exist today, geochronological units are time intervals that transpired in the past. The geochronological units include the following from smallest to largest, ages, epochs, periods, eras, and eons. Eons were the longest time intervals. Ages were the shortest. As you can see, chronostratigraphic units have corresponding geochronological units. This makes sense. Again, the purpose of the geologic timescale is to relate the rocks we see on Earth in the present to time intervals that transpired in the past. Those of you who plan to dig deep into geology should commit yourselves to learning the eons, eras, and periods of the geologic timescale. The epochs and ages will come later, but the eons, eras, and periods are the first step in developing a strong, thorough understanding of Earth history. With that knowledge, you will be able to tell the difference between the Jurassic, Cretaceous, Cambrian, and all of the other periods in Earth history.